Hello guys and welcome to this video where I'll be talking about uh, tricks that I use in speedrunning that you guys can apply for yourselves in regular gameplay. So I'll be covering uh, different sections in different areas. I'll make sure to link them in the description below and in the pinned comment of areas I'll cover such as how to use boosters properly, um, such as cancelling animations or uh, using a hook effectively and little tricks you can use there, uh, combat that you can use and you know, that I use in glitches runs, and general parkour movement tips as well, as well as some uh, swimming stuff. And at the end I'll also be covering controls and how uh, I use them personally and maybe it's different little keybinds you could use. Anyway, let's get started with the video. First up is boosters. So you can see that I select my Light Hunter booster here, I drink it, and that's the regular animation that plays. Now you can actually speed this up, I'm just going to demonstrate what a slow drink looks like. So, for the first part, we go into kicking to cancel. So I drink this booster, and as soon as I, I, the stats pop up on the top left, you kick to cancel it. You can hear the little drink sucking sound he makes, and you can cancel it as it happens. So. For this next bit, it, another way to cancel is just to jump, jump cancelling right here. You do it at the same time as you would with a kick, and um, it's for me personally, this is what I use in my, when I speedrun. There is a third option though, which is a bit more complicated, but you switch to your grapple, and dr and during the drink animation you use a grapple, but it doesn't actually use the grapple, it instead just cancels the booster animation, so that's another way. There is also uh, sometimes in situations where you can drink and cancel the animation by falling and taking full damage, but you will still get the active effects from the boost in time. So over here, you can see that you can even use uh, each different method inside safe zones. So I'm kicking in the safe zone, but it doesn't actually register. I'm also jumping inside the safe zone. So all these little uh, strats that I demonstrated earlier work inside the safe zone. So you guys can use this yourself if you want. A nice thing that you can also use uh, during these uh, during this section in the museum is I can actually use the booster during the section to speed it up. So if you ever find this uh, sort of dream high sequence really annoying, you can always just speed it up by drinking a booster during then. For this next sequence, we're going to look into running and how we can actually speed up and recover stamina faster. So you can see here, Crane gets tired very fast, and this is the usual recovery where you just go slow for a bit and walk before Crane is able to get stamina back and run again. However, what I do here is that you can listen out for the telltale sound of him running out of breath. <laughs> like that. I just amplified the sound just to make it clearer, and as soon as that happens and the screen kind of goes dulls out, you see I kick to cancel. So for this next part, I'm going to talk about general parkour. So you see that was a very slow climb there, but what you can do instead, instead of going directly, you can go jump on something smaller and then jump up directly there, and it's actually much faster. Uh, compared to actually going through a, a two or three second long animation of climbing up slowly. So I'm going to demonstrate it again over here. Jump up here directly, it's very slow, but if you go to the right on this fence and jump up there, it's much faster, you don't get any animation, you have more general control over what you do. So likewise, if you want to get to a higher place, you can um, you can go around and go around up through other areas instead of actually jumping up directly yourself. So just to further demonstrate, uh, here's another clip of me going up through step laddering here and looking to the right to jump to the lower edge on the right hand side. If I go back and try to repeat that again, you can see how the camera really influences where you go, as looking to the left gets you into that slow animation, and looking directly forward gets you that slow animation there. So it's very important of where you look. Timing when you jump is also very important. If you run up to this wall here and jump as you reach the wall, you can go into a slow animation there. Compare that to actually jumping beforehand where you get air time just before you reach it, and you don't go through an animation there, so it's very important there. Next part is just a general example of seeing where to go rather than going for directly to the fence. Jump in a small pipe or some small object next to it and you can go up directly faster. This is comparing two different areas of jumping up, so there's the direct route where you're going straight forward there, but if you actually look to the right and go up there, it's much faster and you can avoid an animation. This next section I'm going to demonstrate what it's looks like to climb up normally on a very low, low level character. So you see it's a very slow animation of him reaching up every single time, and it's a bit of a chore doing it too. But I'm going to compare that to something called jump climbing. So as, I'm, as I reach each point I press spacebar to jump up, or the jump button if you're on controller, and you can see it's much faster. So uh, to further demonstrate you're going to do it again here. So you jump up by spamming uh, the jump button as you're doing it, and it's much faster than actually climbing up regularly. Now on onto the grappling hook. So you can see that I grapple here, and it's a bit lower than usual when it goes up to an animation, which is slower than actually grappling to the top, where you skip an animation and you're already at the top there. Just general small things that can help you traverse faster. 
Now onto grapple cancelling. So this is what a regular grapple looks like. And if you leave it to the end, you could drop into an area you don't want to be in. But for the next part here, you can see that I want to land on top of the van. And I'm going to grapple to the same spot and cancel it. So I press C, which is the crouch button on PC, to cancel it. And there you go. I'm going to demonstrate that again by cancelling it early and landing where I want to. So you can always do this in any part. To show this further, you can actually cancel your way all the way down to the bottom from very tall heights without actually taking any damage. You can see I'm grappling over and over again and cancelling. Of course I ran out of grapple, but hey, it's just to demonstrate this. So you can do this almost anywhere in the map. This is something that I find very useful, and it's called save warping. So you can see over there on the map that I want to go all the way to the objective marker and introduce myself to Rice. But I'm all the way over here near where, near where the tower is, almost 500 meters away. But what you can do is actually select a quest, in this case Holy Year Tunnel, and you'll notice when I quit to the main menu here, I'm going to go back, obviously I'm going to be loading just to show the full context of going on. So you click continue, and since I'm tracking a different quest, it's going to load me into a different location. So it says Holy Year Tunnel on the selected quest there. If I press space to continue, it's going to load me in at Holy Year Tunnel, which is across hundreds of meters of way of where I was before. So if I track uh, Pact of Rise again, I'm only under 100 meters away from it, and I'm all the way on the other side of the slums map. So this is very useful. Um, you can do this with any quarantine zone and most uh, quests in general. Obviously, not all quests will do this, but it's nice to know that you can actually essentially fast travel like this. Now to further demonstrate that, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to pack the rice mission again. I need to go all the way over to that safe zone over there, where the antenna is. I can see that Stuffed Turtle is a nearby quarantine zone, so I'm going to select that. I'm going to quit to menu. And of course, I'm just going to click continue as soon as I can in the main menu. It's going to load me back in, and you can see that uh, stuff total is selected there. And it's going to spawn me right outside the supermarket where the quarantine zone is. And that's only about, not even 100 meters away from where I need to go. As you can see, I'm much closer to the objective marker than I was before, which was all the way on the left over, side, over there. So this is very useful, and you can do this pretty much most quests in the game. Next up is swimming. So I'm in the tunnels here, I'm going to dive into water, and this is what regular swimming is, where you just generally move forward, and Crane swims with his little breaststroke animation there. This is quite slow, but it's generally how the game sort of, you know, makes you want to swim. Uh, and it's it's pretty slow. So what speedrunners actually do, is that um, you can look down, and press the crouch button on PC at C, and move forward at the same time. So it's essentially looking uh, diagonally downward, and, you, and your downward momentum goes to your forward momentum, and it's much faster you can see there. So to further demonstrate this, I'm going to alternate between swimming normally and swimming using the uh, fast swim method here by using pressing W and C at the same time. You can see there's actual drast, uh, vast difference between the two. You can also do the same by pre going up by and pressing spacebar uh, while looking a little bit to the ceiling. So your upward momentum transfers to your forward momentum. So that's something you can also do. Um, generally speaking, uh, you can press C to go down and spacebar to go up. So if you want to go down super fast, you can press W and look down and C at the same time. And you can do the same while pressing spacebar and looking up at the same time. So now we are in the following, and there's an actual different swimming method than uh, than the, the previous ones that I talked about. So here's normal swimming, and I want to get to the small island over there. That's a bit annoying. So what you can do is equip the Pizer suit. I drink a booster here just to increase my aerial speed, and I jump in the air and activate my Pizer suit. So it's essentially like a wingsuit. And what I'm doing here is I'm jumping and activating my Pizer suit as I'm in the air, so I'm essentially like jumping and gliding through the air as I'm doing it. It's a bit of a weird thing to do, um, but is much faster than you know, regularly swimming if you want to go far places, especially in a place like the following where there's so much open water. Uh, there's another method actually, um, using a grappling hook. So what you do, you can jump from dry land and drop kick. And during a drop kick animation, you can actually grapple underwater. So you can do the same thing again by grab, jumping and uh, drop kicking to grapple. Now you have to be, uh, when you jump out of the water, make sure you're sprinting as you're doing it and you're looking forward. You might not be able to drop kick as I failed to do it right here. It's a bit of a weird trick, but if you pull it off, it's really nice. Now here uh, is just a demonstration of combining both Pizer and drop kick swimming at the same time. So I jump, activate my Pizer, 
drop kick and then switch to my grapple. It's very hard to pull off, but once you learn it, it's really nice once you're actually able to do it and you can uh, traverse across water really fast. Now we're moving on to combat and we're starting off with the bow. So you can see I have the ranger bow selected just for demonstration and I draw and uh, shoot normally. It's relatively slow. Um, you can actually speed this up by kick cancelling. So I shoot and immediately cancel and draw the bow as you, the kick animation ends and you can see it's much faster. Now I'm going to compare that to drawing the bow normally again and you can see the vast difference in speed between them. So it's a nice trick if you want to just spam arrows at a horde of enemies. Another thing about the combat is the using your skills to the full potential. Stuff like melee throw, power attack, uh, drop attack, as well as stomp. All these things that even if you're playing on Nightmare and you have a low, low level character, you can still pull off relatively well. You can one shot with that drop attack as seen there with my hammer. It's one of the worst weapons in the game, there's you know, less than 100 damage, but I'm still able to do that. So you can also use stuff like grapple, even brutal grapple to upgrade a version of it. Um, drop kicks and stuff like that, and you can just push and pull zombies into environmental hazards, and it's very simple. I'm playing on Nightmare just to demonstrate um, how easy it is. You can even kick them if they're close enough. Of course, I'm being a bit careless here, letting these uh, zombies get to me. But it's just for demonstration purposes, I, as I just spam uh, doing that into them. So I, you can combine uh, moves together, such as vaulting over one zombie to, drop, to then drop attack on the other one. Now, for stuff like the Demolisher here, I uh, demonstrate you can actually use melee throws, which is very powerful. So I'm switching up between uh, throwing different two-handed weapons at him. Now obviously you might think it's not doing any damage against him, but let's just take up his armor. So I'm just cutting between different areas of all parts where I'm just uh, throwing stuff at him. And it's generally really OP and does a lot of damage. This is also on Nightmare without any legend buffs damage. So you can melt him down pretty fast like this. So melee throw is very important if you've got uh, throwaway weapons or you don't want to you know, use any weapons. And as you see, it kills them like that. It's very quick. So we're at the end and I want to talk about uh, toggle crouch versus uh, hold to crouch. So one trick in speedrunning is to use a quiet dagger and spam it, spam charging it up as you can see at the top left with the numbers there, to demonstrate to speed up your um, movement speed. Now. Uh, that was a toggle crouch, it's much easier to do that, but if you have it on a uh, halter crouch it's a bit harder to pull off as you have to hold for each part and it's a bit unwieldy. That's that's just to demonstrate the use of the quiet dagger as well as um, just, uh, using different ways of charging it. On the subject of hotkeys, as you can see I have a plain hammer in my uh, fourth weapon slot and uh, as this is for PC only by the way, so you go to controls and you go to key bindings, you can actually get shortcuts for each uh, weapon and equipment slot. So right now I have select weapon 4 as B5 on my mouse. So if I quick select I can instantly bring up this weapon whenever I want to. And obviously you can apply this to all four of the weapon and equipment slots. And that's that about it for my basic tutorials. So uh, if you have any more questions please feel free to hit me up on uh, in the comment section below. Uh, I'm also on the on Discord, on the Dying Light uh, Speedrun Discord, as well as the Dying Light Official Discord. I'll link both of the uh, join links below. I'll also link um, uh, tutorials on how to get stuff like the Pisa suit um, and the Quiet Dagger items that I've used in this uh, tutorial demonstration. So if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. I uh, hope I covered any uh, the, all the basic stuff. Thank you guys very much for watching.